You've made it just in time. There's only one active escape pod left. Come on, we can hide out on the planet below. I'm a soldier with the Republic, like you. We're the last two crew members left on the Endar Spire. Basila's escape pod's already gone, so there's no reason for us to stick around here and get shot by the Sith. Come on, there'll be time for questions later. Good to see you up instead of thrashing about in your sleep. You must have been having one hell of a nightmare. I was wondering if you were ever gonna wake up. I'm Karth, one of the Republic soldiers from the Endar Spire. I was with you in the escape pod, do you remember? We've been slipping in and out of consciousness for a couple of days now, so I imagine you're pretty confused about things. Try not to worry, we're safe. At least for the moment. We're in an abandoned apartment on the planet of Terrace. We were banged up pretty bad when our escape pod crashed, but luckily I wasn't seriously hurt. I was able to drag you away from our crash site in all the confusion, and I stumbled into this abandoned apartment. By the time the Sith arrived on the scene, we were long gone. You don't have to thank me. I've never abandoned anyone on a mission, and I'm not about to start now. Besides, I'm gonna need your help. Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet, they've declared martial law, and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. But I've been in more spots. I saw on your service records that you understand a remarkable number of alien languages. It's pretty rare in a bar crew. But it should come in handy while we're stranded on a foreign world. There is no way the Republic will be able to get anyone through the Sith blockade to help us. If we're gonna find Bastila and get off this planet, we can't rely on anybody but ourselves. That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Bastila's the key to the whole Republic war effort. The Sith must have found out that she was on the Endar Spire and set an ambush for us in this system. I believe Bastila was on one of the escape pods that crashed down here in Terrace. For the sake of the Republic war effort, we have to try and find her. I don't, but Bastila's is young, and she has a powerful command of the Force. We survived the crash landing, so I'm willing to bet that she may have too. Besides, what's the alternative? I mean, if she's dead, then no one can stop Malak and his Sith from wiping out the Republic, and I'd rather operate on the assumption that she survived. Bastila's is gonna need our help. Many of Darth Malak's followers can use the dark side of the Force, and the Sith have already killed more than their share of Jedi in this war. Nobody will be looking for a couple of common soldiers like us, and if we're careful, we can move about the planet without attracting notice. A luxury Bastila won't have. She's gonna have half the Sith fleet looking for her. They know how important she is to the war effort. The whole planet is under quarantine. No ships can land or take off. So if Bastila's gonna escape Terrace, she's gonna need our help, and we'll probably need hers. While you were out, I did some scouting around. There are reports of a couple of escape pods crashing down into the Undercity. It's probably a good place to start. But the Undercity's a dangerous place. We don't want to go there unprepared, and it won't do Bastila any good if we go and get ourselves killed. I'll tell you whatever I can, though I, I don't know how much help it'll be. Everything I know about Malik is pretty much common knowledge. He escaped the trap that killed Darth Revan, his Sith Master. With Revan's death, Malak became the new Dark Lord. It's obvious that Malak's a ruthless tyrant who'll crush anyone who stands in his way, just like Revan was. Experience has shown that the Sith won't stop until the Republic lies in ruins. Malak and his Sith don't respect anything except raw, brutal power. It's hard to imagine how someone who used to be a Jedi could become such a monster. Malak and Revan were once both part of the Jedi Order, but they were young and headstrong, and against the wishes of the Council, they went to battle the Mandalorians on the Outer Rim. Something happened out there. Something corrupted them and drew them over to the dark side. Or maybe there was something rotten inside them all along. I don't know. They formed an army of ex-Republic soldiers and Jedi who had fallen to the dark side, with Revan at their head, until Revan was killed by Basila's Jedi strike team. But even that didn't slow the Sith down. Malak just stepped in and assumed Revan's role. He took control of the Sith Armada and resumed the bloody conquest of the Outer Worlds.
Well, I hope you're right. But the Republic hasn't been able to stop them so far, even with their support of the Jedi Council. I think Basila may be the galaxy's last hope. Taurus was once a magnificent planet-wide metropolis of towering skyscrapers. But that was a long time ago. The upper city where the rich citizens live is, is still pretty safe. If it wasn't for the Sith occupation and the planet-wide quarantine, it might not even be a bad place to live. But farther down, things have degenerated. The, the lower city is nothing but a slum overrun by swoop bike gangs, waging a never-ending war for control. And the undercity is... Well, it's even worse. The lowest level of Terrace is a wasteland overrun by rat ghouls. Mindless, diseased mutants that attack on sight. I've already entered all this info into your data patcher. I understand why you want to know more about me. I, I kind of get the feeling we'll be spending a lot of time together over the next while. But this isn't really the best time for long introductions. We should stay focused on the task at hand. There'll be a time for that later. Good idea. We can use this abandoned apartment as a base. We can probably get some equipment and supplies here in the upper city. Just remember to keep a low profile for some grim stories about the Dark Jedi interrogation techniques. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. But I figure if we don't do anything stupid, we should be okay. I mean, after all, they're, they're looking for Basila, not a couple of grunts like us. All right, soldier, let's move out. Yes, what's on your mind? Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. I've seen one mission, of course. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter these Sith animals could have Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's fleet. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop it. I'm just a soldier. I go where the fleet admirals tell me to. I follow my orders and I do my duty. It, it's just... <sighs> Doesn't seem right that doing that means I failed. I... I didn't. Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not making much sense. I'm, you probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action, keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. Bastila, you're alive! Finally things are looking up! Now I just need to figure out a way to get off this planet. You mean you don't have a plan to get off Taurus yet? What have you been doing all this time? I see. Now that I'm back in charge of this mission, perhaps we can start doing things properly. Hopefully our escape from Terrace will go more smoothly than when you rescued me from Brezhik. I know you're new at this, Bastila, but a leader doesn't berate her troops just because things aren't going as planned. Don't let your ego get in the way of the real issues here. That hardly strikes me as an appropriate way of addressing your commander, Karth. I am a member of the Jedi Order, and this is my mission. Don't forget that. My battle meditation ability has helped the Republic many times in this war. And it will serve us well here, I'm sure. Your talents might win us a few battles, but that doesn't make you a good leader. A good leader would at least listen to the advice of those who have seen more combat than she ever will. You know, I had my doubts about this mission, but I figured the Jedi Council wouldn't put you in charge if you weren't prepared. But here you are, acting like a spoiled child. I see. It's true that I don't have much military experience. Perhaps I should not be so quick to judge. Very well, Karth. What do you suggest we do? First off, we can't get hung up on who's in charge. We all need to work together if we want to get off this rock. The answer is out there. We just have to find it. Well said, Karth. And the sooner we start looking, the better. I've already been a prisoner of the Volkers, and I don't plan on being captured by the Sith. I think we'll need some help getting off Terrace. Maybe if we ask around, one of the locals can help us out. We should probably start by asking around in the cantinas. Is something wrong? You... Yes, what's on your mind? I'm all ears, beautiful. Which, the fact that I'm all ears, or the 
Beetle. I might consider it, but what are you going to call me in exchange? I like the first part of that. I'm a bit more partial to the most handsome pilot in the galaxy. What do you think? Well then, I guess gorgeous will just have to do until then. Well, but kidding aside, I bet you're not about to give up on those questions. Are they really necessary? It's an interrogation you wanted. Why didn't you say so? All my secrets are purely of the mundane variety, unfortunately. Nothing worth extracting, though. You're welcome to try. Let me ask you something first, though. I've been going through the battle aboard the Endar Spire over and over in my head since we crashed. Some things just don't add up for me. Maybe you could tell me what happened from your perspective. Basta is as powerful as I say. She's the one who defeated Darth Revan after all. Mm. I guess that no Jedi ability, no matter how powerful, makes up for being completely surprised and outmatched. We didn't choose that battle anyway. It got forced on us. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm just as surprised that any of us are alive to talk about it. Come to think of it, it's more than a little surprising that you happen to be here, isn't it? I mean, just what is your position with the Republic fleet anyway? Well, Unless you consider that you were a last-minute addition to the roster and you just happened to be out of those rides. You were the only one. Not to mention that Bastila's party was the one who requested your transfer. The Jedi requested numerous things when they came on board, but hell, they practically took over the ship, as far as I can tell. Considering your connection to Bastila and the Jedi, whether you know it or not, your presence here seems a little convenient. I'm probably wrong, and this is probably nothing. I learned a long time ago not to take things at face value, however, and I hate surprises. I expect you, right? I've got no real reason to suspect you of anything. Still, it's better to be safe than sorry. It has nothing to do with you personally. I don't trust anyone. No reasons. And no, I'm not going to discuss them, so can we just keep our mind on more important things? Okay. Like I said before, I prefer action to talk anyway. Spoken briefly with the Council. They request an audience with you. We should go at once. An audience with the Jedi Council? It's pretty unusual for someone who isn't even a Jedi. What's this about, Bastila? I'm sorry, Karth, but I cannot tell you. All I ask is that you trust in the Force and the wisdom of the Council. Well, I don't like being left out of the loop, but I'm not looking to get you in any trouble with the Jedi Masters. We'll do things your way for a while. Come. They're expecting us. I will lead you to the Council Chambers. This morning's getting stranger by the minute. First, Bastila comes out looking like she saw a ghost, and now you. Well, Bastila did mention that you should go to the Council Chambers before she left. It's no doubt urgent, so you shouldn't keep them waiting. Well, I can't say I blame you. I, I haven't exactly been sleeping well myself. Here, I thought things would get better once we escaped Terrace. No, she didn't. She didn't seem well, as I recall, and for that matter, neither do you. Are you all right? You got... Yes, what's on your mind? You do? Well, fair enough. What do you want to discuss? <laughs> I know you wouldn't understand where I was coming from. Let me try and explain. You're probably one of the most skilled women I've ever met. You've saved my butt more than once, and I'm lucky to have you here to help me. No question. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop watching you being wary. I'm just not built that way. Period. I don't know that yet. Like I said before, it's probably nothing, but I've been betrayed by people before, and I... Well, it won't happen again. That's all. Look, I'm not trying to insult you. This is just the way I am. No need to take it personally.
Well, you can stop wondering. I'm not. No, I don't want to talk about it. But I want us to save the galaxy, if that's even possible. Why is whether or not I trust you or anyone so damned important to you? Why, why do you even care? We don't have time for this, so can we please just drop it for now? Can we pick it up later if you really must? I, I want to get underway. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh, you want to argue some more, is that it? And I don't want to argue with you either. I mean, you seem sincere enough, I guess. I just don't trust easily. And for good reasons, which are my own. Oh, damn it. I suppose I won't get any rest until I talk, will I? You want to know why I don't trust anyone? Fine. Here goes. Five years ago, the Jedi had just finished the war with the Mandalorians. Revan and Malak were heroes. I was damn proud to have served in their fleet. It was completely unexpected when they turned on us, invading the Republic while we were still weak. Nobody knew what to think, least of all me. Our heroes had become brutal, conquering Sith. And we were all but helpless before them. I mean, think about it. If you can't even trust the best of the Jedi, who can you trust? No, it wasn't even that. Th there were others. Good, solid men, trusted men who turned on us as well and joined their cause. Malak and Revan and the Sith deserve to die for what they've done, but the ones who fled the Republic and joined them are even worse. The dark side has nothing to do with why they joined with the Sith. They deserve no mercy. I know, I'm... And I should apologize to you. I've, I've become so accustomed to expecting the worst in others, and you've done nothing to deserve that. It's just... No, never mind. Let's just continue with what we were doing. I'd rather not talk about it. I thought I said I don't want to talk about it. Listen, sister, just because we're working together doesn't mean you get to go badger me with constant questions. Blast it if you aren't the most frustrating woman to talk to. Isn't there someone else you can harass for a little while? Oh no, I'm not falling for that one. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. What, me? What did I do? You win. Look, I suppose I could use someone to talk to. I'm just not used to it, and I don't know why you're so interested, but here goes. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most. Saul. With good reason. Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier. And I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. I didn't want to, maybe. Are you so sure you would have? Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. I mean, even when things looked to be at their worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it.
Well, there's more to the story, I guess. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. Yes, what's on your mind? Have I been quiet? I suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. No? Well, you certainly aren't helping matters any either. And it's really starting to irritate me. For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. It is none of your concern, Karth. And you would do well to leave the matter be. I respect you, Bastila, but you've been as closed-mouthed as the rest of the Council. If you won't talk to me, then maybe somebody else will. And why is that? You were a great help on Terrace, but why would they keep you with us? Don't they... don't they have to train you? A bond? What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? <laughs> I have trouble believing that. I've been watching you. You can be cruel and impulsive. A Jedi without self-control or training. And yet the Council sends you on your way. Why? I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. And what does that mean? Well, is this more of that destiny garbage that the Jedi keep talking about? Well, that can't be it. Well, I'll tell you this much, I'm not gonna wait around until I'm betrayed again. Yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? Look, I didn't mean it that way. I wanna get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's, let's just get on with what we were doing. Yes, what's on your mind? I, um, uh, I'm not very good at this. I, I know I owe you an apology. Uh, more than one, probably. I was just so desperate to finally face Saul directly in the Battle Over Terrace. And now the Jedi have us looking for these, these star maps. I know this mission is important, it's just, I, I feel a bit useless. I, I mean, I can fight, sure, but I'm no Jedi. All this feels completely out of my league. Because this is more important. This may really finally make a difference. I suppose even if I can't figure out everything that's going on, I still want to help if I can. I just hate not knowing what's going on and feeling this... helpless. I mean, I, but I shouldn't have taken that out on you. I've been a royal pain in the backside, haven't I? No, I do worry about it. I've traveled the lanes more than once. I should know better than this. So, I'm sorry. Will you accept my apology? Oh, well, I don't know if I like the sound of that. So you do accept my apology? <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. You know, you, uh, you aren't so bad to have around. You know that. Well, more than that, but... Anyway, we should be off. Yes, what's on your mind? I already told you, he betrayed us all. Well, there, there is more to it. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. It's just that I don't talk about it very much, okay? I told you about my homeworld, Telos. Four years ago, Saul led the Sith fleet there and demanded its surrender. The planet refused, and Saul proceeded to devastate its entire surface. Millions died. I had a, a, a wife and a son on Telos. I thought they would be safe there. But my task force arrived too late to be of much help. We, we didn't have enough medical supplies. The colony was, was burning and the dying were everywhere. I remember holding my wife and screaming for the medics, but that th they didn't come in time. Of course not, how could you? I, 
I, mean, I had nothing left after that, really. I, I devoted myself to the fleet. Hunting Saul was my only purpose. I, I miss them. And I know killing Saul won't bring them back. And, I, and it won't make me happy again, but I... I have to do it. I don't expect you to understand, but I have to pay him back for what he's done. I have to. It's all I have left. She had courage, and she was stubborn. <laughs> A little bit like you in that respect. Never talk her out of anything once she put her mind to it. And she hated it when I signed back onto the fleet at the start of the war. I had planned on, on leaving soon to join her. His name was Dustal, and I don't know what happened to him. The colony was a complete ruin, and we never found any trace of him. I made inquiries and followed the reports from Telos for years, but I stopped. Anyway, that's the story, for what it's worth. I've, uh, never talked about it before to anyone. I suppose it's time I finally did. Karth! Karth Onessi, is that you? Jordo? It is you, isn't it? I knew it when I laid eyes on you. You old space dog. How have you been? I thought for sure you'd be fighting on some ship out there. I was. I crashed. <laughs> That's pretty rich. I can't imagine what it would take to keep you on the ground. Must have something to do with your pretty friend here, hey? How do you do, miss? Sure am. We joined the militia together back on Telos. That was a lot of years ago, of course. So what are you doing here, Jordo? Last time I saw you was on, the uh, well, Telos, actually. Yeah, it's a shame about home. Telos still hasn't recovered. The family and I moved on, and I'm working for Zerka now. I didn't see you after... Uh, what I mean is, my condolences on your wife. I heard what happened. At least your boy made it through all right. My boy? Y you mean... Dustal? Yes, of course. I saw him at my last stop on Korriban. Though he didn't recognize me. You... didn't know he was there? No. Jordo, Dustal's been missing since the attack on Telos. Are you... are you absolutely certain it was him? Yeah, I'd recognize Dustal anywhere. Positive. He's, um... he's joined the Sith, Garth. What do you mean he's joined the Sith? There's an academy for the Sith on Korriban. He's a student there. I saw him suited up in their outfit and everything. Sorry, I thought you knew. No, no, I, I didn't. Well, thanks for telling me, Jordo. Sure, no, no problem. Good to see you again, Karth. Hope everything works out with Dustal. Dustal? Dustal is alive. We, we have to go to the Korriban Academy and find him. Thank you. I, I, I just have to see him. I have to know what happened to him. All this time I thought he was... He must be a man by now. Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, th there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. You take a wrong turn, so... Dustal! Is that you? Oh, lovely. It's father. Figures you'd show up after all this time. How did you manage to get inside the academy? Cute. I wonder how interested Master Uthar would be to know just who he has in his whip. Unless you've switched sides, Father. But I doubt that. Just why are you here, Father? Not for me, I hope. Couldn't you have gotten yourself blown up on some ship and spared us this reunion? Dustal, what, what, what are you talking about? I, I thought you were dead. Too bad you didn't still think that. Or did you really think I'd be happy to see you? Look, everyone! It's Father! Come to rescue me at long last! Sure, he may have left Mother and I to die on Telos, but that doesn't matter! No, I didn't abandon you. The task force just arrived too late. Telos was in ruins, and your mother... I, mean, I held her Why? But I looked for you. I swear, I looked everywhere. Ah, oh, save it. You abandoned us long before. We were alone all during the wars, and even once you came back, you still didn't stay. I didn't have a choice. I was needed at... Yeah? Well, you were needed at home, too. You were needed when the bombing started, and I got captured. You know what? It doesn't matter. Not anymore. I have a new family now, a family that cares about me. I don't need you. The Sith? You can't mean that. No, the Sith killed your mother. The Sith destroyed Telos. So? You're the soldier, father. How many mothers have you killed? No, you've been brainwashed. The son I knew would never... You never knew me. 
You weren't even there to know me, so don't presume to tell me what I would or wouldn't do. I don't know what's been done to you, but you are coming with me out of here now. Touch me, old man, and I'll kill you. Get out! Get out of here before I tell the Sith that you're here. I don't need his protection, not anymore. The Sith give me everything I need. You can't mean that. The Sith are... they're evil. They're the dark side. They they took me away from you and your mother. They're, they're what took you from me. No, they are not evil. They're not. The dark side is superior. And you, you were at war long before they came along. The Sith war to conquer, to rule the helpless. I went to war for you, Dustal, for your freedom, your future. <laughs> I don't believe you. If I failed you, son, then it's... it's my failure. Please don't add to it by becoming part of something evil. Prove it. Prove that the Sith are so evil, and I'll... I'll think about it. I'm not gonna follow you around, forget it. If you're caught, they'll just think I was betraying them. I'll stay right here. I won't tell anyone you're here, for now. You find some proof, and you bring it to me. If I hear you asking questions about me, or doing a single thing to jeopardize my position in the Sith, I swear I'll tell everyone what you're up to. You got that, Father? You prove what you're saying is true. I'm not going anywhere otherwise. I got it, Dustal. I'll be back. I swear it. No, what I want is to find something. Anything that will convince Dustal that we're telling the truth. There must be something in the Academy that we can bring to him. Something that would show him what the Sith really are. That data pad, just take a look at it. I wonder if Dustal knows his friend was disposed of like that. If not, it might convince Dustal that what we're saying about the Sith is true. It'd be worth a shot. Back already? So tell me, Father, where's this proof you promised? I have a data pad I want you to look at. You knew someone named Selene? Selene? She's the one who convinced me to come to the Academy with her. Why? Where did you get this? Look at it. It belongs to Master Uthar, doesn't it? Yes, it's his, but he told me he... He said that she'd been lost on a mission in the Valley. This... This says that they... Killed her because she was hindering your progress. Superiority at any cost, Dustal. There's your evil. Or can you live with that? No. No, I can't. I... I had no idea. They lied to me. Well, there's the son I remember. Now, will you leave here? I... No. You go do whatever you have to, Father. I have some other friends here. I have to warn them what's going on. And maybe I can, you know, look around here and find out some more information. From the inside. Something that might help you. I don't suppose there's any way I could talk you out of that, is there? I mean, you're not gonna do anything halfway. Sounds familiar. I guess it does. I'm proud of you, Dustal. You aren't hanging on to a lie after you see it for what it is. Not everyone could do that. Maybe after this is all over we can... talk. I'm still not sure about... us, but I'll listen. Maybe we can get back to where we should have been. Well, I'd like that. I'll go back to Telos when this is over. You can find me there. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, son. Good luck. Yes, what's on your mind? I think so. If he's anything like he used to be, Dustal hates to be tricked. There's no way he'll let the Sith trick him again. As for whether or not he'll be my son again, I... I don't know. He's so full of anger and hate, I... Wasn't expecting him to be like this. Well, maybe we can work it out. I... I hope so. I... I guess I'll have to wait and see. Thanks, by the way, for... all your help. Yes, what's on your mind? To think that I once looked up to these two as the best that humanity had to offer. Now I'd like nothing more than to put a blaster to both their heads. Although I suppose that only Malak is left, isn't he? Turned on his own master. Not, not that Revan didn't have it coming. <laughs> Typical for their kind, I guess. No, not personally. But they aided the Republic during the Mandalorian Wars. They were heroes. Without them, the Mandalorians would have finished us for certain. In the fleet, we didn't see much of the Jedi. And I only met Malak once, but I was impressed by him. I guess that just shows how much the dark side can change someone. Nobody does. When they left, after the Mandalorian Wars ended, they were Jedi. When they returned, they were something else. Well, when they returned from wherever they went, they, they had an entire fleet with them. Nobody knows where they got the ships. They had a lot of them. And as the years have passed, there always seems to be more and more, while our forces dwindle. Did they really get away with it, though? 
Revan was betrayed by Malak, and Malak hasn't won. In the end, the dark side won't help him. I, uh... I used to think that it was a fancy name for something that I see every day. Corruption is everywhere. People are greedy and stupid and do horrible things. I'm starting to think it's different for the Jedi, however. That there's this evil watching them, waiting for its chance. I've been watching you. You have this, uh, incredible darkness inside you. Some of the things you do disturb me. It's not just you. It's Bastila as well. She's so... intense. And I don't pretend to know much about the Force, but... I know evil. No, of course not. All I'm saying is that when you have so much power, the stakes are higher. I can only imagine the kind of conflict that goes on inside you. Well, neither you nor Bastila are fully trained on how to handle your power. I'm just concerned at what might come. Oh, and that's not what I... I mean, I've, I wouldn't want to see you hurt, either of you. I suppose finding the star maps is more important than your training and your safety. I, I just hope there isn't a price for you to pay. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh, it's it's nothing, sorry. I told you my wife died four years ago. I, I, I've just been trying to remember what she looked like. It shouldn't be so difficult. I, I can remember things about her, things she did, the way she smiled, what her hair smelled like. Our last fight, just not her face. I try and hold it in my head, but it, it, it's gone. Oh, is that strange? Maybe I shouldn't be talking to you about this. But I should be able to remember her face. It's... it's frustrating. I, I feel like I'm losing her. I, uh... It must look really strange for me to be obsessing like this still. You, you must think I'm incredibly stupid. Well, I, I suppose you're probably right, but... I have to do it anyway. The only thing that's kept me going since she died has been the need to find Saul and kill him. It's better to think about that than anything else. If I can do that, then maybe I can let her go. Let it all go. If we encounter Saul, if we ever have the, the chance, promise me that I'll be the one to kill him. I, I have to settle this. I need to. Thank you. I, uh... I guess there's really nothing else to say. Yes, what's on your mind? You mean if I kill him? Well, I never thought about it. I, I suppose I always assumed that I would be dead once Saul was. Well, it's never occurred to me. I've always been the captain of my own ship, after all. Or thought about going after Saul on my own. But I'm not in the same situation now. I wouldn't risk hurting you or the others. You don't think I would throw away everything we're doing here, do you? I would like to think that I wouldn't put you in danger, that I wouldn't forget that there's more behind Saul that needs to be stopped. If I saw Saul, however, I had the chance. I don't know what I'd do. I, I really don't. I mean, his death has been my entire focus for so long. Well, that's easier said than done, but I know you mean well. I promise you I'll see this through, no matter what. As for what comes afterward, well, let's wait until I know that I'm around to see it. Oh, well, I hadn't thought you'd notice. Ah, uh, I'm not that bad, am I? Damn it, woman, if you keep hounding me, I'm gonna put you over my knee and teach you a lesson. Oh no, I'm not even going there, sister. At any rate, I wasn't ogling you, I've just been admiring you. No, I've been watching you in action, your your skills. You, you have a natural talent that is it's incredible. Not, not that uh, all I do is watch you or anything, I, might, I didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that sooner? You would have saved me a lot of trouble. I, I will say one thing, however. 
We've come a long way with your help, whether it's the Force or fate or just dumb luck. I'm, I'm glad you're here. We probably would never have made it this far without you. I, I, I should have said this long before instead of doubting you, but I, uh, I hope you can forgive me. And you accepted it, but that doesn't mean I'm forgiven. I'd like to be. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's get back to what we were doing. Dictorship. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Karras vessel. My own mentor. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet, and a hero to me, until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, which is Saul Kareth's flagship, was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day, and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. That is not the way of the Jedi. Vengeance, anger, emotion. These things lead to the dark side. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some mad quest for vengeance, but if I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get my way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. But I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. We can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Karath doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. We just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. Maybe I can goad the guards into making a mistake. If I get them mad enough, they might put me in a separate cell to punish me. With them focusing so much on you three, I might be able to sneak out of my cell and come rescue the rest of you. <laughs> It's a risk we have to take, Big Z. I can slice my way free of any security cell. Don't worry, I can pull this off. I won't let you down. You'll see. Hold on, they're dragging us into the docking bridge. Karth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I will kill you for what you did to my home world. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. It was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, Saul. And for that, 
I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the Dark Side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Carath, as will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the Dark Side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. Your loyalty is as fickle as ever, I see. Malak will find that amusing, though I seriously doubt he will want you of all people at his side. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him and the history between you. You mean, oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malik is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. <laughs> Enough. I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malik will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. I am interrogating you, not the other way around. You will answer questions, not ask them. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Karth will suffer. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? Alderaan is nothing but a planet of artisans and philosophers. There is no training academy there. You must think this is a game. Very well. This is the price of your resistance. Ah! Enough. You see what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the Academy was on Dantooine, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantooine is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. A brave front, but your feigned indifference does not fool me. Your masters are eradicated, along with any hope of someone rescuing you. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? Do you take me for a fool? The Jedi are not assassins. They would never devise such a plan. Perhaps you need a reminder of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. No! Oh, oh. ah! Listen, can you not hear him suffering? You can spare him further pain by simply answering my questions. Now I will ask again, on what mission did the Jedi Council send you? Perhaps another lesson is in order. No! Ah! Ah! No! I beg you! Mercy! No! I am surprised he did not pass out sooner. Rarely have I seen someone withstand such punishment and remain conscious. I see I am wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. I will leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. Ah! 
Don't try to move too quickly. You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Carath had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Carth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. I fear he is forever lost. This is not a matter to joke about. If there is one thing we can learn from Saul, it's how the power of the dark side can corrupt even the bravest of heroes. So forgive me. Snapping at you like that won't help our situation. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taurus, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger, casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Brooke, Endar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saw gets back. Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival, and to report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I, uh, I have to confess something. There was a, there was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping that you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. No, I know you would never do anything to intentionally cause me pain, but you had no other choice. You couldn't betray our cause. I, I don't honestly know if I could have been as strong in your position. Watch you suffer like that, I... I might have cracked. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we are here now. Malak is coming. Well, then we better hope Mission busts us out of here before he arrives. Good job, Mission. I know you wouldn't let us down. When we get out of this, I'm gonna see that you get a medal from the Republic for everything you've done. Now, if I remember the layout of the ship, our equipment should be in a storage chamber just through the north doors. After we grab our stuff, we need to get to the main bridge controls. The bridge is the only place that we can open the docking gates of the hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We have to open those gates before we can fly out of here. We better get moving. I can feel the darkness of Malak's presence approaching, and I don't want to be here when he arrives. None of us is a match for the Sith Lord. Surprise and secrecy will serve us best. A small group might have a better chance of sneaking onto the bridge undetected while the others make their way down to the Ebon Hawk. Count me in, then. I've got a score to settle with the Admiral before we get off this ship. And I have a feeling I'm gonna find him on the Leviathan's bridge. That's a good idea. The others can get to the Ebon Hawk on their own, but Karth and I might need your help. The three of us will get our equipment and make our way to the bridge. The rest of you head down to the docking hangar where they've got the Ebon Hawk. We'll have to find a way to deal with the guards. Don't you worry about that. I know how to deal with the guards. They won't know what hit them. We'll meet you there as soon as we get those docking bay doors open. Just make sure the Hawk is ready to fly when we get there. And may the Force be with you. Mind. Oh, you can tell, can you? I do. It's serious, though. I need your attention. Is, is this a good time? All right. I'm, uh, I'm concerned about you. I've been keeping these thoughts to myself mostly, but I think it's time I say something. It's about you. I'm worried about what you're doing to yourself, how much you've succumbed to violence and anger. I knew it was possible for this to happen to you, and it just pains me to see it. I've been down this path, and I don't recommend it. If, uh, if I'm gonna find some purpose beyond taking revenge on Saul, then it's gonna have to be in protecting you. I don't know why, but I think some terrible fate is waiting for you. I think the Jedi Council knows it, too, and I don't want that to come to pass. I... I don't know. I'm, I'm not the best of men, and I'm not the strongest fighter there is, but I'll find a way. If 
If I'm gonna live past Saul, I need you to as well. Let me protect you from yourself, from the Sith. You have to let me try. Because, because I never got the chance to save my wife and son. Because I didn't stop Saul when I had the chance. Because I finally have the chance to do it right. You are an extraordinary woman. You make me think that maybe I might have some purpose beyond revenge. I don't know whether it means anything to you, but it does to me. I'm glad to hear that. I'll do my best. Very resourceful. I assume you had some part in this. You learned your lessons well from me. The only thing you taught me was betrayal and death, Saul. Don't be a fool. I'm giving you and your companions a chance to surrender. A chance to live. Darth Malak himself is on his way. He'll be arriving any moment. He speaks the truth, Garth. I can feel the Dark Lord's presence approaching. Malak will destroy you. But if you throw down your weapons now, I will ask my master to be merciful. I've seen enough of Sith mercy. You always did like to do things the hard way. Lord Malak would have preferred live prisoners, but corpses will have to do. Cars. Cars. The Admiral! He's still alive! It's time to finish this. No, Karth. Not like this. Do not give in to the hate. Don't you understand what this man has done to my life? Do you know the pain he's brought me? Killing him won't ease the pain, Karth. Do not become what you despise. Karth. <laughs> Must tell you. <laughs> Must tell you something. <laughs> Come closer. You didn't know, did you? <laughs> Remember my dying words. <laughs> Remember them whenever. Whenever you look at those you thought were your friends. Ah! It can't be true, can it? No, 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 it, it can't. Damn you, Saul. Damn you. Basil, it is true, isn't it? And, and you knew. You and the whole damn Jedi Council, you knew the whole time. Karth is not what you think. We had no other choice. Please, you don't understand. So make me understand. Not here, Karth. Please, there's no time. Malak is coming. This isn't the place. Please, Karth. I'm asking you to trust me for just a little while longer. Okay, I'll trust you, Bastila, but as soon as we're off this ship, I expect some answers. Of course, Karth. As soon as we get to the Ebonhawk, I'll explain everything. To both of you, I promise. Darth Malak. Down you go! <laughs> I hope you weren't thinking of leaving so soon, Bastila. I spent far too much energy hunting down you and your companions to let you get away from me now. Besides, I had to see for myself if it was true. Even now, I can hardly believe my eyes. Tell me, why did the Jedi spare you? Is it vengeance you seek at this reunion? What? <laughs> you mean you don't know? <laughs> All this time, and you still haven't figured it out. <laughs> I wonder how long you would have stayed blind to the truth. Surely some of what you once were must have surfaced by now. Even the combined power of the Jedi Council couldn't keep your true identity buried forever, could it? The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. The Council would not normally accept an adult for training, but this is a special case. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. Tatooine. Kashyyyk. 
Manan. Koraban. Revan visited each of these worlds searching for clues to reveal the hidden location of the Starforge. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Starforge could lead you down an all too familiar path. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? To use their own knowledge against them? were, Revan. Recognize that you were once the Dark Lord, and know that I have taken your place. You do not yet remember, Revan? The Jedi set a trap. They lured us into battle against a small Republic fleet. During the attack, a team of Jedi Knights boarded your ship. The Jedi strike team captured you and the Council used the Force to reprogram your mind. They wiped away your identity and turned you against your own followers. I helped them, Revan. I always knew that one day the title of Dark Lord would be mine. When the Jedi strike team boarded your vessel, I saw my day had come. I ordered my own ships to fire on your bridge. I thought I could destroy all my enemies with a single glorious victory. I never dreamed that Jedi would take you alive from the wreckage. You mean why did I betray you, Revan? You are the one who taught me the ways of the Sith. The strongest must rule if we are to survive. You knew I would one day challenge you for supremacy, but you underestimated me. I acted sooner than you expected and seized the Sith throne with a single brilliant stroke. The Jedi are fools. They do not believe in executing prisoners. Originally, I assumed you had died in the battle. Imagine my surprise when I found out you were still alive, Revan. It's true. I was part of the team sent to capture Revan. To capture you. When Malak fired on the ship, you were badly injured. We thought you were dead. Your mind was destroyed, but I used the Force to preserve the flicker of life in your body. I brought you to the Jedi Council. They were the ones who healed your damaged mind. The Jedi Council didn't restore your wounded mind, Revan. They merely programmed it with a new identity, one loyal to the Republic. They tried to make you their slave. The Jedi hold all life sacred, even that of a Sith Lord. I could not just let you die, Revan, not if it was possible to save you. Bastila hides the truth behind noble words, Revan. The Jedi needed the memories buried deep in your wounded mind. There was no other way to bring them out. They had to keep you alive.
How can you say that? Malak nearly killed you, but the Jedi Council gave you another chance to live. They gave you a chance to redeem yourself by defeating the Sith. A rash and futile hope. The dark side is too strong, my power is too great. Even my old master is no longer a match for me. A small part of me has always regretted betraying you from afar. I always knew there were some who would think I acted out of fear, that I did not want to face you. But now fate has given me a second chance to prove myself. Once I defeat you in combat, no one will question my claim to the Sith throne. My triumph will be complete. The Jedi Council were foolish to let you live. I won't make the same mistake. We shall finish this alone in the ancient Sith tradition. Master versus Apprentice, as it was meant to be. This isn't over, Malak. Your friends do not give up easily, Revan. You always could inspire loyalty. But even the three of you together cannot stand against my power. For the Jedi! I'll hold Malak off. You two get out of here. Find the Starforge. Uh, no, Bastila, he's too strong. No! The door's sealed. We can't get past. Come on, we have to get to the Ebon Hawk. Bastila doesn't stand a chance against Malak, but we can't help her. Not here. We have to get off the ship and find the Star Forge. That's the key to beating the Dark Lord. Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. We can't let her sacrifice be in vain. Come on! Where's Bastila? What happened on that ship? We ran into Malak. He would have killed us, but Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. You mean she's... she's dead? Bah, Malak won't kill her. Don't be foolish. He'll want to use her battle meditation against the Republic. Turn her to the dark side, and the Sith will always be victorious. Not so fast. We've got a bigger issue to deal with here. They deserve to know the truth about you. Do you want to tell them what Malak said, or should I? Revan? What, what are you talking about? Is this some kind of a joke? No, it's no joke. The Jedi Council captured Revan and erased the Dark Lord's mind, programming in a new identity. Saul Karath told me on the Leviathan, and Basila confirmed it. You're Darth Revan? This is... this is big. Do you... do you remember anything about being the Dark Lord? And so the lies begin. It was obvious you remembered something back there when Malak confronted you with the truth. It might have only been small pieces, but there was something there. Just a few flashes. That's it. Nothing more? Then I don't think there's a problem. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You are who you are now, right? Of course it still matters. How do we know more memories won't come flooding back? How do we know Revan won't suddenly turn on us? The whole time we've been chasing after Malak, we've had his old Sith Master right at our side, listening to our secrets, hearing our plans. Hey, you've got nothing to be sorry about. You didn't ask for this. Besides, I know you. You're not Revan anymore. Whatever you used to be, you're one of us now. Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. How can you say that, Mission? The Sith bombed my homeworld, Revan took away my family, and destroyed my life. Everyone knows it was Malak who gave the order to attack your people, Karth. You can't blame Revan for that. It, uh, all makes sense now, Revan. I've watched you. I've seen your cruelty. I've seen your... your dark side. And now this. I don't know if I can trust you. Can any of us? What about me? I already knew who you were, though it wasn't my place to tell you. Better off that you know, if you ask me. Does it change anything? I'm not here to judge you. You do what you have to do, and I'll help if I can. 
You defeated the Mandalore clans in the war, Revan. You were the only one in the galaxy who could best us. We had never met one like you before, and never since. How can you even ask if I'll follow you? Whatever you're fighting, it will be worthy of my skill. I'm your man until the end, Revan. No matter how this plays out. Commentary. I am experiencing something unusual, Master. Answer. My programming is activating my deleted memory core. I believe I have a, a homing system that is restoring it, Master. Observation. My homing system is a function of my assassination protocols, that which I told you had been deactivated. This system was not. Affirmation. Correct, Master. Sith protocols maintain that all droid knowledge be deleted before assassination missions and restored upon return. I have returned to you, and my full functionality is now under your personal command. It is a distinct pleasure to see you again, Master. Commentary. I believe I have served you well in the past, Master, and will continue to do so for as long as you have need of me. Wow. What are the chances of that happening? Remember, we're talking about the Force here. At this point, Malak himself could drop out of the sky and I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Good point. I knew the little guy would come through for you. Droids don't hold grudges. Well, the others seem to trust you. And I don't see any other way that we can stop the Sith. And I suppose that Malak is the real enemy here. I really don't have any other choice, do I? I want to believe you. You've proven yourself time and time again during our mission, but this is a little much for me to wrap my mind around. This must be even more of a shock to you. I don't know how you even keep going. I guess we both just have to find a way to push forward. Don't worry. I won't let my personal feelings get in the way of my assignments or this mission. But don't forget, I've sworn an oath to defend the Republic. As long as this mission stays on course, I'll stick with you. But I won't let you betray the Republic under any circumstances. So I guess that's it then. We keep going. We've still got one more star map to uncover if we're gonna find that Star Forge and save Basila. So let's do it before it's too late. If you're ready to talk, then yes, so am I. I can't hate you. I tried. I wanted to hold you responsible for all the things... I got the revenge I always wanted when Saul... All I can th You have a darkness. That's... You have this... I think I would be hurt worse if I didn't try. Whatever's happened up until this point, there's going to come a time very soon when you're going to have to make a choice. And there won't be any turning back. I want you to make the right choice. I want to give you a reason to. You gave me a future. I want to give you a future too. With me. I think I could love you if you give me the chance. Well then, I'm, I'm glad. Let's, let's face the future together then. There's still a lot to do. Malak thought you might be afraid to enter the temple again, but he doesn't know you like I do. Not anymore. Not since you've changed. Come on, Bastila. We have to escape before Malak shows up. Escape? You don't understand. I have sworn allegiance to Lord Malak and the Sith. I am no longer a pawn of the Jedi Council. Surely you know what I mean, Revan. Look at what the Council did to you. They turned you into their puppet. 
the same thing they do to all who are truly strong in the Force. They speak of the dark side as if it is something to be feared, but in reality their only goal is to manipulate those who are strong in the Force. The fear of the dark side is a tool to maintain control. Why do you think the Jedi forbid you and Malak from joining the Mandalorian Wars? They knew you would realize your true potential and break free of their domination. Malak has shown me how the Jedi Council have been using me the same way they once tried to use you. They've been holding me back because they knew one day I would surpass them all. I resisted it first. I endured the Sith torments with the passionless serenity of a true Jedi, emptying my mind. But after a week of endless tortures, I finally saw the truth. Malak forced me to acknowledge my anger and pain. He showed me the liberating power of these emotions. Then he made me see how the Jedi Council has denied me what is mine by right. The Jedi Council gladly used my battle meditation in their wars, but they still treated me like a child, like an inferior. They were jealous of my power, of what I could become. They wanted me to bow and call them master and follow their code and obey their every order. But all the while, they were exploiting my battle meditation for their own use. You used to be Revan, Master of the Sith, but no longer. You were simply a pawn of the Jedi Council and the Republic they serve, like I was, until Malak freed me from their shackles. A pity the power you once had is so diluted in you. You could have been as strong as I am now. Stronger even, but that will never happen now. With the power of the Starforge, Malak will destroy the Republic and conquer the galaxy. And I will be the apprentice at his side, after I prove my worth by killing you. You were stronger than I would have thought possible after what the Jedi Council did to you. Seems that Malak was wrong. The power of the dark side is not lost to you after all, Revan. Yes, Revan. I was there when you almost died in the trap set by the Jedi Council. I used the Force to preserve your life. We are forever linked by my actions on that bridge. The Council tried to exploit our bond. They hoped your memories would lead me to the Star Forge. But in our shared visions of the star maps, I also tasted the power of the taint within you. You deserve to be the true master of the Sith, not Malak. I see this now. Together we can destroy your old apprentice. Join with me and reclaim your lost identity. Your mind was too badly damaged to ever fully restore your memories, Revan. But your power, your strength of will, the essence of who and what you are, these things still remain. Once, long ago, you defied the Jedi Council, freeing yourself from their control. You claimed your rightful title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Together we can defeat Malak and take back what is yours. Listen to me. The dark side leads to death and destruction. I've seen the horrors the Sith have unleashed on the galaxy. Turn away from this path! Shut up, old man. Your time is over. The age of the Jedi and the Republic is no more. This is the age of Darth Revan and the Sith. Don't do this, kid. I don't want to, but I'll fight you if I have to. Even if it costs me my life. Yes. The sacrificial blood will consecrate this ancient temple in the name of the Sith. With the death of the Jedi, the rebirth of Darth Revan will be complete. You will have to disable the energy shield around this temple before we can leave. There is a computer here on the temple summit that has access to the power generators. You can also use it to disable the disruptor field that protects the Star Forge. Otherwise, the Ebon Hawk will not be able to leave the planet without crashing. Vasily, you're alive. I was worried about you. For a minute there, I, w I was sure that we'd never see you again once Malak got his... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Where's Jolie Bindo? Was he okay? W what happened inside that temple? 
What? Wait, what are you talking about? The Jedi Council has failed, Karth. Darth Revan has been reborn. Together, we will destroy Malak and seize control of his fleet. Then use it to crush the Republic. Jolie would not swear loyalty to the new ruler of the Sith. He died for his foolishness. Now swear loyalty to Darth Revan or face your own death. No, you can't mean that. This, this isn't you. You're not Revan. I know it. You've got to resist it. This isn't you talking. We, we can help you. We can find a way to... My, my. I think the sad fool may actually be in love with you, Revan. No, never. You're not the woman I love. We'll stop you if we have to. All of us. The droids will continue to serve you, Revan. They are programmed to obey their master. And there may be others who will choose to join us. The Republic is doomed. Revan has returned. Who will now swear loyalty to the second coming of the Dark Lord? You're Revan, and I'll follow you anywhere. It doesn't matter who you're fighting against, I'll be at your side. Mandalorians don't have any great love for the Republic anyway. Light side, dark side, it doesn't make any difference to me, Revan. I'll stick by you no matter what comes. I saw what the Sith did to Terrace. Anyone who serves the dark side is evil. Big Z and I are with Karth on this one. Salbar, Revan's a Sith, just like Malik. It's not betrayal if you break your life dead now. No, Salbar, I don't care. I won't help the Sith against the Republic. Not for anything. Not even for you. You don't have to help the Sith mission. Not while I'm here. I see now it was a mistake to let you go into that temple. And I, of all people, should have seen this coming. First saw Karath, and now you. And I should be an expert on betrayal by now. Nothing you can say or do can make me betray the Republic. I won't join you. And I won't just stand aside and let you become ruler of the Sith again, Revan. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna find a way to save you. I swear. I won't give up on you, no matter what. Run for admission! Go! Go! Let him go. We have more important things to worry about. We have to get to the Starforge and kill Malak. Then we can turn our attention to the Republic. No! This isn't happening! It can't be happening! No, I'm not just gonna stand aside and do nothing! You'll... you'll just have to kill me! But I don't think you will. I don't believe you've gone over to the dark side. Not totally. I don't think you'll kill me. Not if I don't attack you first. <coughs> Looks like you'll have to do your own dirty work, Revan. If you've got the guts. <coughs> Ruthless as Malik ever was. Quickly now, we have to get to the Starforge and destroy the usurper. Im <laughs> Impossible. I, I cannot be beaten. I am the Dark Lord of the Sea. Yes, I cannot deny it any longer. <laughs> You are the one who deserves... Who deserves to be the Dark Lord. You were the one who found the first star map on Dantooine, Revan. <laughs> it was you who led us on our quest for the Star Forge. I only followed in your wake. I tried to usurp your rule to steal the title of Sith Master from you. But now I understand. The destiny is yours, Revan. 
not mine. You... You are Darth Revan, Lord... Lord of the Sith. And I... I am nothing. And so it ends, as I somehow always knew it must, in darkness. So you killed Darth Malak. Somehow I... I always knew you would. The Republic fleet picked me up from the planet. I told them of your betrayal. But I also told them that I couldn't abandon you. I had to come. I said I'd find a way to save you from yourself, and I will. And abandon you? No, I couldn't have done that. I knew I sensed your presence. I should have known you would find a way to meddle in this one last time. Don't interfere, Basila. This is between me and Revan. You're a fool. Revan has already made her choice, and there is no turning back. Don't listen to him, Master. Let me strike him down. Seize your victory. I wish, I wish there could have been another way. Kill him, Master. <laughs> oh! The fool is dead. Now there's nothing in the way of your victory. Lost another capital ship. It's hopeless. All Republic forces pull back. Pull back! It is too late to retreat, Admiral. The Sith Armada has cut us off. There is no escape for us now. Then the Republic is doomed. throne. The Jedi Order is in tatters. It is only a matter of time until your Sith minions wipe them from the face of the galaxy. The Republic fleet is decimated. The core worlds are defenseless against us. Malak thought you might be afraid to enter the temple again, but he doesn't know you like I do. 
Not anymore. Not since you've changed. Come on, Bastila. We have to escape before Malak shows up. Escape? You don't understand. I have sworn allegiance to Lord Malak and the Sith. I am no longer a pawn of the Jedi Council. You say that as if the dark side is some terrible entity. The Jedi Council has brainwashed you like all the others. Like they once did with me. They speak of the dark side as if it is something to be feared. But in reality, their only goal is to manipulate those who are strong in the Force. The fear of the dark side is a tool to maintain control. Why do you think the Jedi forbid you and Malak from joining the Mandalorian Wars? They knew you would realize your true potential and break free of their domination. Malak has shown me how the Jedi Council have been using me the same way they once tried to use you. They've been holding me back because they knew one day I would surpass them all. I resisted it first. I endured the Sith torments with the passionless serenity of a true Jedi, emptying my mind. But after a week of endless tortures, I finally saw the truth. Malak forced me to acknowledge my anger and pain. He showed me the liberating power of these emotions. Then he made me see how the Jedi Council has denied me what is mine by right. The Jedi Council gladly used my battle meditation in their wars, but they still treated me like a child, like an inferior. They were jealous of my power, of what I could become. They wanted me to bow and call them master and follow their code and obey their every order. But all the while, they were exploiting my battle meditation for their own use. Lies? You were the one living a lie, Revan. The Jedi Council made you into something you are not. They programmed you to be their slave. You used to be Revan, master of the Sith, but no longer. You were simply a pawn of the Jedi Council and the Republic they serve, like I was, until Malak freed me from their shackles. A pity the power you once had is so diluted in you. You could have been as strong as I am now. Stronger even, but that will never happen now. With the power of the Starforge, Malak will destroy the Republic and conquer the galaxy. And I will be the apprentice at his side, after I prove my worth by killing you. You were stronger than I would have thought possible after what the Jedi Council did to you. Seems that Malak was wrong. The power of the dark side has not lost you after all, Revan. You can deny what you are, Revan, but you're only fooling yourself. I know the truth. I have seen the shadows inside your mind, remember? I was there when you nearly died in the trap set by the Jedi Council. I used the Force to preserve your life, Revan. We are forever linked by my actions on that bridge. These are not your true feelings, Revan. You are speaking as a tool of the Jedi Council, as I once did. But now I see how the Jedi used us both. The Council tried to exploit the bond between us. They hoped I would draw out your memories to lead them to the Star Forge. We were slaves to their will, like all who follow the Jedi Code. But in our shared visions of the star maps, I also felt the so-called taint within you. I resisted it at first, but now I embrace the power of the dark side. Your dark side. Mistakes? No, Revan. The only mistake you are making is the one you are making now. You deny yourself the power that is yours by right. Only now do I realize how strong you are. You deserve to be the true master of the Sith, not Malak. I see this now. Together we can destroy your old apprentice. Join with me and reclaim your lost identity. Your mind was too badly damaged to ever fully restore your memories, Revan. But your power, your strength of will, the essence of who and what you are, these things still remain. Once, long ago, you defied the Jedi Council, freeing yourself from their control. You claimed your rightful title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Together we can defeat Malak and take back what is yours. It is your power that will keep me as your loyal apprentice, Revan. I swore allegiance to Malak only because I thought you'd lost the power you once wielded. But you have proven yourself in our battle. I see you possess the strength to destroy Malak and reclaim the mantle of Dark Lord. Now I see you will make a worthy Sith Master. 
It's not too late for you, Bastila. The dark side is evil, but it isn't all-powerful. You can still fight against it. Don't let it consume you. You are beneath my contempt, old man. You hid like a coward for decades on Kashyyyk. You know nothing about the true potential of the Force. But you, Revan, the power of the dark side is yours to command. You can use it to destroy Malak. With my help, you could rule over the entire galaxy. You were a pathetic fool, Revan. Together we could have defeated Malak and ruled over an empire. But now, I will be at Lord Malak's side instead. You will be crushed with the Republic and all the fools who bow down to the Jedi Council. No one can stand against the power of the Star Forge and the Sith Fleet. Where's Bastila? Is she alive? What happened inside that temple? The dark side? Bastila? No! No! How could that happen? She was always in danger of being seduced by the dark side, Karth. Bastila was strong. She was always impatient and headstrong. Malak preyed upon her weakness. This planet is a tainted place. The Star Forge and the Temple have twisted the Force into an instrument of evil, just as Malak has twisted Bastila into a servant of the Sith. In the end, we all choose our own path. But keep in mind the role that you played in her downfall. You and the task assigned to her by the Jedi Council. Remember the bond that was forged between you when she rekindled the spark that was your life. Through that bond, she touched your memories, and also the echo of the dark taint within you. But there's still hope for her, right? I mean, Revan rejected the dark side, so Basila could too, right? We still might be able to save her. I'm not sure what's in store for us, but I sense Bastila still has a role to play. I have no doubt she'll be waiting for us on the Star Forge. No doubt. But let's go then before she has time to organize a bigger welcoming committee. Impossible. I... I cannot be beaten. I am the Dark Lord of the Sith. Still... <coughs> Still spouting the wisdom of the Jedi, I see. Maybe there is more truth in their code than I ever believed. I... I cannot help but wonder, Revan, what would have happened had our positions been reversed? What if fate had decreed I would be captured by the Jedi? Could I return to the light as you did? <coughs> if you had not led me down the dark path in the first place, what destiny would I have found? I suppose... I suppose you speak the truth. I alone must accept responsibility for my fate. I wanted to be master of the Sith and ruler of the galaxy. But that destiny was not mine, Revan. <laughs> it might have been yours. Perhaps, but never mine. And in the end, as the darkness takes me, I am nothing. What happened? I don't think that anyone actually expected that he could be redeemed. Surprised you'd even think of trying. 
No time to celebrate just yet. With Bastila dead, the Republic has broken through the Sith fleet. The capital ships are in bombardment range. And that means we all have to get out of here right now before this entire complex comes down around our ears. Everyone else is already on the ship. Let's move. Orbital stabilizers. Everyone pull back. I don't want to lose any ships when that space station goes down. We did it, Vandar. The Sith are routed, and the Starforge destroyed. But at what cost, Admiral? Where is the Ebon Hawk and her crew? the victory party without us, Admiral. I'm sending an honor guard to escort you in. You'll be getting a hero's welcome when we all get home. You have defeated Malik. Destroyed the Starforge and broken the spirit of the Sith. For this, I am proud to present you each with the Cross of Glory, the highest honor the Republic can bestow. From Coruscant to the farthest reaches of the Outer Rims, you will be known as the Saviors of the Republic. On behalf of the Jedi Council, Defenders of the Galaxy, and sworn protectors of the Republic, I too would like to honor you for your actions. We Jedi now have another tale to weave into the grand history of our eternal order. The redemption of Revan, the prodigal knight. Wherever you go, you will be recognized as the saviors of the galaxy, the heroes of our age. But you must remain ever vigilant, for one day you may be called upon yet again to defend the glory of the Republic against the tyranny of the dark side. This is the destiny of the Jedi.